Welcome to Ginyun 101 Kang Yip Lam Yao. I'm your host, Tui Fan. Starting a business can be daunting, but also really exciting. We want to help guide you and give you advice from the experts on the best way to start your business and take the necessary steps to go through the proper channels. The good news is there are many resources available to you around the country, and in this segment, we'll introduce you to a few. Once you have your business idea and are determined to move forward, you need to begin planning and seeking advice. Most people know about the Small Business Administration, or SBA, but there are other helpful local organizations such as the SBDC and SCORE. Many city, counties, and most states have a business assistance office or other point of contact to help the prospective entrepreneur connect with organizations and associations that can be of help. There are also companies that specialize in helping the entrepreneur to launch his or her new business. As you begin planning, you should think about your team, those who will be working with you as you start your business, and their roles. It could be just one other person or your whole family. Also, it could include someone who will help you get your facilities up to code or install the necessary business and accounting hardware and software that you will need. Or it could be someone who will be assisting you with getting the equipment, supplies, products, or commodities that you will be using or selling. You will find that getting your team involved as early as possible will be very helpful in the long run. Now that you have done some planning and want to push ahead, one of the very first steps in starting your business is getting a DBA. That is short for doing business as, or in other words, your business name. Hugh Nguyen, who is the Orange County Clerk Recorder, says the steps to getting a DBA is simple but necessary. Mấy người mà làm uh, business mới, người ta phải file cái fictitious business name. So what happens is you come in and you research and make sure the name is not taken. Cái tên không có. And so, um, vào trong đó, làm cái giấy là gọi là fictitious business name. Lúc mà file xong cái giấy rồi đó, mình phải publish. You have to publish with the adjudicated newspaper. And so that's the process. And once you file that, về sau á, là mỗi năm năm là phải file renewal. Mỗi năm năm là the new business, the business owner phải file cái renewal mỗi năm năm. Rồi office của Hugh á, một tháng trước khi cái renewal á, thì là mình gửi cái giấy to remind uh, customer là phải vào renew cái tên fictitious business name. This requires going to the city or county and registering. It will likely be one of several trips to the county or city hall, but remember that these people are there to help you as you move forward. There is also a nominal fee to file the DBA. The fees for filing cái fictitious business name là 23 đồng for one name. Um, so majority of the time, uh, Hugh Cook, um, staff ở đây nói tiếng Việt Nam được. So they come in and they can um, talk to somebody, người, người ta nói tiếng Việt Nam ở đây, hay là gọi trong điện thoại cũng có nhiều người nói tiếng Việt Nam phụ à, mấy quý vị được. A DBA, or doing business as, is also known as a fictitious business name. It allows you or your company to do business under a name different from your own. The law in most states is that unless a DBA filing is made, a person can only do business under his or her own name, and corporations and limited liability companies, or LLCs, can only do business under the name on their formation document. To do business under a DBA, you must complete and file the appropriate forms and pay filing fees. This is typically done with a local or county agency. However, some states require a filing with a state agency instead of or in addition to the county. Think about us like, like a big file cabinet, right? You file your name, I file mine, and if there's an issue, you have to take it to the courts. Then that's why quý vị mà vào check cái name, you search for the name first to make sure cái name không có taken. Once you search it, then it's up to you to file that or not. That's why it's important to renew it. Mỗi năm năm phải renew. Tại vì cái tên của mình, mình giữ cái tên đó rồi. If you are forming a corporation or LLC, there may be additional requirements. Also, you need to pay attention to any time limits on the business name. Many states require you to refile after a specific number of years. Once you have your DBA, corporation, or LLC name, you can begin using it. Additionally, some states and counties require you to publish your new business in the legal notice public notice, or business section of local newspapers. Nguyen warns new business owners that come to the city to be wary of solicitors who offer to do the service for them, insisting that it is easy and doable on your own. It's very important. Mấy người customer với community của mình đó, là người ta đừng có xài third party. Very important. Tại third party, you charge nhiều tiền. Right? And so for me, it's really sad to see 
lúc mà third party nó nó advertise cho mấy người làm new business để làm nó phụ làm it's very easy vào office của mình vào cái fictitious name anybody can do it And so that's cái đó hiếu nghĩ là cái đó biggest concern for me and I want to let the community know là vào trong đây office của hiếu có nhiều người làm ở đây phụ quý vị được nên với dễ hơn save some money Depending on the publication you choose, the fee for the announcement will vary. So after cái file link, cái fictitious business name, mình đưa cái list, mình đưa cái list cho người ta là người ta publish, người ta publish ở trong cái adjudicated newspaper. So there's a list of all the names. So hiếu nghĩ là mấy quý vị mà file fictitious business name, đợi lấy cái list đó, coi trong cái list đó là coi ai là publish ở trong đó được. So there's a lot of options, a lot of different prices. So it's up to the public. Để người ta coi xem giá nào hay là người ta muốn làm publisher đâu. These are the five advantages of filing a DBA. One, it makes business banking much easier. That's just one reason why DBAs come in handy. When you file a DBA, you'll also get a federal tax ID number or EIN. Once you have your DBA, you can then open up a business banking account. Two, it keeps your business legally compliant. Although a DBA doesn't provide you with legal protections in itself, It does further separate you from your business. Three, your name defines your brand. Four, it opens up expansion possibilities. As we've mentioned, registering a DBA allows businesses to operate multiple firms under one ownership without having to form a separate business entity each time they expand. Five, it's easier to register a business name. Làm birth, death, marriage certificate, fictitious business name, property record copies, notary public, Em mở cửa mỗi ngày từ 8 giờ tới 4 rưỡi. Cái này là mấy cái service mà quý vị mà vào, quý vị coi mấy cái search được mà muốn apply, uh, lay birth, death and marriage certificate làm đây. Cái này là search property record tới 1982 the present, fictitious business name, notary, process server, legal assistant, professional and unlawful detainer. So fictitious business name là đây. So you can click on this and you can file fictitious business name. That's the application. There's options. New business name, renewal, change of fictitious business name, abandonment of fictitious name, withdrawal of a partner. So if we are going to file a new one, mình click cái này là bắt đầu cái process. So you start the process here. See? So you start with this option. And a lot of people are, lot là nhiều người individual. Come on. So there's the options there. Em đến đây hôm nay là để mở cái uh, business fictitious for cái cooperation của em. Yeah, và cái process is uh, rất là dễ. So far is very nó rất là đơn giản để apply. Thì uh, cái process đến đây um, mình phải uh, bỏ vào những cái thông tin mình muốn uh, xin để cho cái business của mình để make sure là government nó có cái tên của mình trong hệ thống I believe so. Uh, và mình chỉ điền những cái thông tin đơn giản về uh, về cái business của mình thôi, chẳng hạn như tên, address uh, và những cái in, information về bản thân của mình personal, chẳng như em em là cái người apply thì em phải điền tất cả tên tuổi của em vào. Yeah. When it comes down to it, filing a DBA name is the easiest way for sole proprietorships to register their business's name and establish their business as entities separate from themselves. In California, the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, or GoBiz, was created to serve as the state of California's leader for job growth and economic development efforts. On the website, there are endless options for small business owners to search for industry-specific guidelines to help them navigate the permits. If that's not enough, Lillian Conroe, who is a permit specialist, works directly with clients to help them. If you know you want to start a business and you contact me, I'd like for you to sit down with me and do what we call a pre-permit meeting. And if I see that you want to do a restaurant with liquor license that out in that particular city, I will ask the city to sit down with us and then let this so the city can explain all the permits that they're going to require business license when it comes to a liquor license they're going to need a conditional use permit that means they have to file for paperwork go through a hearing and then on that hearing that the community will be allowed to come in if they object to that liquor license they have a you know they'll be able to speak before that commission and say why they object the police department might come in at the same time you're filing for your license with alcohol beverage control but you cannot move until the city gives you approval on the conditional use permit Once the city gives you that conditional use permit, 
then you, they'll, move the, they'll do the paperwork and move it over to alcohol beverage control. Once, you, once alcohol beverage control has the permit, all the paperwork from the city, then they'll go through and do their part of the inspections, review everything, but they won't do it until you have met all the conditions of the city. To help users with their business, the agency has a website that guides you on what permits you will need by industry. They can go to our website. Uh, we have a business portal where we have their different icons on the most popular type of industries like food truck, manufacturing, restaurants, and you push on that icon and then that icon will tell you all the per basic permits that you would need and it gives an explanation. If not, they can call myself or call our 800 number. And like I said, we'll be glad to give them that information on how to ask the proper question and, and I will tell them, when you ask this question, this is the information you should get. To navigate the site, you first go to www.business.ca.gov forward slash. From there, you click on Permit Assistance. After that, you click on Permits, Licenses, and Certifications. From there, you click on the tab that says Learn More. From there, you can click on Business Quick Start Guides, and that will take you to the Learn More tab. There you can click on individual industries and go through the checklist of the permits needed in your respective industry. This is a snapshot guide and one that Conroe says she is here to help with. One permit that's overlooked is occupancy permit. That's a permit you go in a place you see occupy or occupancy limit, may say 150. If a person doesn't have that, they can also be uh, stopped. They must have the occupancy permit and that usually comes through the city or the city fire department or the county, this depends on where the location is. This is a fantastic resource to make sure your business is in accordance locally, countywide, and statewide. So a lot of people don't know where to start. So a lot of times they're on the website, they're going through the city, and we have a system where we call CalGold, which provides them that information of inputting that industry into the system and bringing up those agencies all on one form. And the CalGold is at www.calgold. C A L G O L D dot C A dot G O V. It's going to ask you to input the city or county, your industry, and when it comes up, the, the box will come up and it'll list all possible permits that you might need. Uh, it could come up with 10 different permits, and out of those 10, you might only need four of those permits. And it would be by city, county, state, and federal government. It will have that agency's website that you can link over to that website, get more information, and download their application. The state-funded organization works together with the SBA and SBDC to help business owners move forward. Once you've completed preliminary planning and settled on the name of your business, the next part is going to the City Hall to get your business permits. Find out what the process is like and becoming familiar with applicable laws and regulations coming up after the break. Welcome back to Kenyan 101, Kanye Blam Yao. I'm your host, Tui Fan. City Hall may seem like a daunting place, but it is, in fact, a place where you can get help when you're starting your business, leasing a new space, or looking to get permits for your new venture. In this segment, we'll talk to the people who make these projects happen and what tips they have when it comes to dealing with permits and making sure you're on track for your business. When you're starting your business, whether it's from the ground up or transferring titles, a good place to start is City Hall. Each city will have its own set of specific guidelines, but to make sure your new or existing business is compliant is key to saving both time and money. A lot of startup businesses does come through our department. So I get a lot of um, inquiries and questions from startup businesses, from young entrepreneurs about how to open their doors here in the city of Garden Grove. 
and the process is very simple. They identify a location where they want to open their doors for business. They come through the city to go through the permitting process. They, If there's any type of construction or improvements that they want to do to their property, they'll come through our building and safety division. And then at that point in time, after that, it's a grand opening. Lisa Kim, who works for the City of Garden Grove as the Business Development Director, says making sure spaces are correctly permitted is one of the first steps. Make sure you do your due diligence. You know, starting a new business is very fun, very exciting for so many individuals, but I think I want to make sure that our business community knows that the property that they identified for their business to be launched is permitted and it was approved for that use. Um, some of the um, situations that I encounter is you have a small business that has entered into a lease and but they haven't come through City Hall to verify if that use was permitted or if there were any code enforcement or related issues with the property and so now that they have a lease in place they are now having to go through some challenges to bring the property back into compliance meaning they have to remove any of the non-permitted construction and then therefore um, and then proceed with their uh, approved set of plans and so what I always try to extend assistance to our business community is you know if you have a building that you want to occupy in terms of to start up your business or expand your business or if you have a particular uh, lease uh, location that you would like to rent give us a call I would be happy to come out to the property with myself um, our building official and kind of walk through the property with you and give you some information as to what the existing con condition of the property and then we will work with your architect to make sure that it achieves your end result which is a, a brand new um, building or a brand new space for your new business. Chief Building Official David Dent and Code Enforcement Supervisor Peter Roque also have tips for business owners. When a new business opens up it's always good for them to come in and ask what rules and regulations are. Uh, one of the things that I see and I've experienced in the past is a lot of business owners don't really know what rules or regulations exist. So for example, putting up a banner, uh, you know, some folks use it as permanent signage where they're meant for temporary, temporary signage. Uh, the sun tends to beat them up and you know, then you can't see the, the, the lettering or what, what the business is actually advertising. So with those, that's why they have limits and that's why they need permits. So those, just education and outreach is a lot of times all, the, all a property owner needs. For example, um, the type of business that goes into a property. Uh, for example, we have different zones in our city so we have to make sure when something gets approved, it's in the proper zone. Well, what we really suggest, number one, is that before they even sign the lease to come into the building department, check on the records, check on the past code violations, check on all the research for the property, because once they sign the lease, they're kind of stuck with what they buy. I mean, that's number one. I mean, we normally get that kind of response is that we've already signed the lease and now we're stuck doing with what we do and they think their building can go there or their use can go there but it's actually not allowed so really signing before signing that lease they need to come in and check with the records department and see what's previously been on the property um, from there then we'll actually do a courtesy inspection if it's really that extreme let's say they want to really remodel the the place or they want to see what's there is actually permitted we'll actually come out there and do a courtesy inspection just to take a look just so that they're feeling comfortable, safe, you know, they aren't experts as you mentioned. And the fact is, is that we're coming out there to see if it's safe, if it's permitted, and if those things are available for them to do with their business. Because they might be wanting to do a kitchen or a restaurant, think the existing equipment is, is compliant, and in reality it's too old or it's outdated or it hasn't been inspected in years. So really the research is the main thing they want to do prior to signing a lease. Oftentimes, the question that my staff ask if an inquiry is made at the public counter, you come to City Hall, um, I want to open a restaurant. And the follow-up question to, that would be made is, do you have a location in mind? So most of the time, there is a location in mind, so we need to double check to see if it's a permitted use. So you want to make sure that it's not built in a residential neighborhood, it's in an area that's designated for commercial use. 
and then through that process if it's an existing space that had some prior approvals already in place you just want to verify that it was previously a restaurant I'm going to buy the business and continue operating as a rest as a restaurant use and then um, you secure a your planning approvals you go through the business tax license process and get your business tax license and then you're on your merit way there's a separate process if it's a startup if it's a vacant property or there is previously retail and you want to convert it there's a separate process that the young businesses would have to go through and it's the permitting and entitlement process Kim wanted to make sure business owners didn't waste time and money doing business with non-permitted spaces a lot of our existing businesses that are very very successful have a um, a certain style how they operate their business and to change takes a very very uh, it's not a challenging process but change is not always easy for anyone I would recommend that they in meet with our small business development center which is one of the resources that I would highly recommend for small businesses um, I would also um, uh, would be uh, reach out to me at City Hall um, I always love to learn the story behind a family business that has been, you know, two, three generations strong and want to take it and scale it. There are a lot of resources available to them. Um, for me, sometimes it's just location. Um, they've been in the current location and have outgrown their space and just need to know what availability is available to them in the city of Garden Grove. On our website, we have a resource under the community, under the business tool. You can identify um, properties that are available for lease and for sale in the city of Garden Grove. So that's a tool and a resource for our small businesses today. Kim says many times in a bid to save time and skirt the permits, people will make changes to their spaces and the results will end up delaying and costing more than if they had gone through the correct permitting process in the first place. Well, the main thing is they they go in there and they just they do improvements. I mean, something like a nail shop, they're going to add a sink, you know, maybe they add a, a little office into the corner. Um, they'll just do improvements because they want to open and that's what their business needs. Even as minor as adding a few outlets, all those things require permits. You know, they might put up signage, you know, they got the banners waving outside saying open, grand opening. All those require permits. So they just assume that they can do those things and open up. But all those parts are part of a code that needs a permit, that needs to get inspected by us to make sure it's the proper size, it's not blocking anybody's view, or you know, it's not too excessive. So those are the things that we actually inspect. Also, as a business owner, you can also alert the city to other businesses that might be violating their terms that may be affecting your business. So there's various reasons why folks complain. I mean, we get uh, types of complaints where somebody's walking their dog and just notices that uh, the maintenance is kind of going downhill. So, you know, they're concerned citizens and they have a lot of community pride. So they, they'll call us and say, hey, uh, this shopping center needs a little TLC. So um, normally they would call us, we would go out there, uh, conduct an inspection to see what uh, would really exist out there. Sometimes we get complaints and um, we follow up and there's nothing there. Uh, sometimes uh, folks are kind of expanding outdoors, for example, uh, would be like a restaurant that starts uh, selling food in the parking lot. Normally there's, uh, you know, those uh, areas are designated for parking. Uh, I've seen where uh, folks put their um, outside cooking equipment in parking uh, stalls. So those are the kind of complaints that we get. And again, um, if somebody's going to conduct in a, a special event, they would need to come in and say, hey, we're going to conduct in a special event and, and obtain a permit for that. That way the city knows that they're going to be using designated space and those, those kinds of things. If you want to do the right thing, you got to kind of want to seek out the information where some people, you know, look at, here's actually the, the part where people go a little one way or another, that they just look at what the neighbor's doing and think that, oh, because that neighbor's doing that, I can do that. When in reality, that neighbor might be doing it illegally as well. So that tends to be the, the, the norm, is that they just look and see what's going on in the city and, and just assume they can do the same thing. Whereas they should come in and ask the questions, am I able to do this? I mean, that's really what happens. In the city of Garden Grove, many of the permits can be searched online, making it even easier. Currently right now, we're trying to streamline the whole building and safety department. What that means is having things access to people that don't necessarily have to come into the building department to, to do. Um, those are small permits that include re-roofing, mechanical, electrical, 
Just some of those remodel when you're just doing various small type scales of projects. Um, because we know their time is valuable. And having to drive down to City Hall, park, wait, do this process is something that we know can be better spent on site. So we open up those things that allow them to go online and, and actually go through the whole permit process for those that don't require a plan. And then from there, once they actually have a permit, they can actually go online again to schedule that inspection and verify that their inspection has been scheduled. And then those are things that normally would have someone coming down here to do. We want to make sure that they can come in and, and do those from their home or from their office or, and save their time. In addition, depending on where you live, there might be assistant programs that the city or county offers. In Garden Grove, they instituted a new loan that allows small businesses to access up to $25,000 to help grow their business. The funds could be used in two forms. You can use the $25,000 towards tenant improvements, and what that means is construction-related work, such as property improvements, landscaping, new signage. Um, that's one uh, component of how you can use the loan proceeds for. The other is you could use it for operating capital, for inventory to your startup business. So um, if you're interested in um, seeking additional information about that, it's called the City Small Business Assistance Loan Program and it's available through our website for additional information. Each city really caters to what culture they have there, the number of people, the business types they want to promote. All those things are, are different per city. That's why it's important that they actually come in and ask. And don't assume, like you're saying, that from one city to the next, they're all the same thing. Because one might have a historical district and their signage is a certain way, or some might you know, have a more pedestrian friendly economy where they want to set things back and do different types of landscape that aren't promoting tripping or, or blocking of certain walkways. So those are the things that you really have to know your city and really the only way to do that is to come in and ask. Officials stress how important it is to reach out so that they are able to guide and work with you on your business. I don't want reaching out to City Hall to be scary. Our job is, you know, your success is our success. And so my goal is to have more conversations with our business community and know that we are only here to help. Well, I think what's most important about our small businesses, especially in the city of Garden Grove, is you are the backbone of our economy. About, I would say roughly about 85% of our businesses are small business entrepreneurs, and they began by you know, locating here in the city of Garden Grove, as well as creating the local jobs that support our economy. So I think um, we need our small business foothold. They are, we hope that they establish locally in Garden Grove and grow to 50 to 60 stores nationwide. And we are the support in place that help them grow. Um, sometimes it's, it's just asking a question and knowing that there's a resource and not to be afraid to come to City Hall. Um, sometimes it's very intimidating because it's government. You know, I want to send the message to the business community that we are here to help you. You know, my name is Lisa. I, I grew up as a, in the restaurant business and I understand working long hours, but I'm able to translate a lot of my upbringing to where I'm at today and, you know, lend that support so that when I have a mom and dad and and son and daughter sitting here asking for help how to grow my business. Um, well, what exactly and how do you want to grow it in what particular area? At least I know there's a resource available to them. Coming up after the break, find out how a husband and wife team found an opportunity to utilize the city's loan program to expand their business. You won't want to miss it. Stay with us. Welcome back to Good Yuan 101, Kanyi Blum Yao. I'm your host, Tui Fan. 
This next business profile relied heavily on the help of the SBDC as well as the city loan program to open up an extension of their business from a food-to-go place into a full-fledged restaurant. Find out how they made their business selling yogurt into something so much more. One of those businesses that was able to utilize this is Tam's Bakery. With the help of the SBDC and the city, they were able to expand their business from a small food-to-go location into a second restaurant with seating. Tam's story is unique. As a husband and wife team, they are the first to be able to sell Vietnamese yogurt or yao that is approved by the state. Cái yao là một cái món ăn rất là thân quen và thông dụng và có đã có sẵn tại Việt Nam từ rất là lâu đời. Nhưng khi mà qua bên đất Mỹ này thì tôi thấy hình như da ua cũng có bán trên thị trường rất là nhiều nhưng mà phần đông là người ta không có cái lai xanh người ta chỉ làm tính cách như là tư nhân rồi sau đó người ta lại đem ra ngoài người ta bán rồi có một buổi tình cờ tôi thấy head department họ xuống họ kiểm tra của một cái cơ sở đó họ thấy da ua không có lai xanh không có label không có như tất cả những cái gì cho hợp pháp thì họ đem đổ đi thì tôi thấy khi mà đem đổ đi như vậy tôi có một cái suy nghĩ tại sao mình không làm một cái gì đó cho nó hợp pháp và hợp lệ đúng cái tiêu chuẩn của Mỹ đúng cái tiêu chuẩn vệ sinh cho nên tôi về tôi suy nghĩ và hai vợ chồng tôi bàn bạc với nhau và sau đó tụi tôi xin giấy phép và có thể nói là hai vợ chồng tôi là người đầu tiên được cái lai sân tại cái Lido Sài Gòn này và lai sân đúng lúc đó là duy nhất được cái lai sân giao ua và bắt đầu từ đó chúng tôi bắt tay vào sản xuất Yogurt is a Vietnamese staple but no one had the correct license to safely produce it that would meet guidelines Sau đó chúng tôi đi bỏ mối ở ngoài thì rất là nhiều nhưng mà trung bình một tuần lễ tôi làm ba mẹ giao ua thì là trung bình như vậy là trên dưới 2.000 ly mùa nắng thì có thể hơn và mùa lạnh thì trung bình 2.000 ly vừa bán lẻ vừa bỏ mối luôn After researching and following up for 8 months Tam and her husband were able to get the permits and sell their yogurt Chúng tôi mất vào khoảng trình 8 cho tới 8 tháng rưỡi mới hoàn tất được cái 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 cái, cái chương trình giao ô và từ đó tới nay chúng tôi vẫn tiếp tục thường xuyên bỏ cho các chợ bán cũng như là những cái địa điểm bán lẻ đó từ ngay bây giờ thì chúng tôi có bán ở tại cái nhà hàng mới mở của chúng tôi là tâm restaurant and sandwiches đó và hai địa điểm bán song song chúng tôi đã tiêu thụ rất mạnh the decision to expand came naturally and is now a new challenge xuất phát từ cái giao ua sau đó cái cơ sở của tôi phát triển dần 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 lên và từ cái thành công đó tôi, chúng tôi giống như có một cái sức bật cái sức bật đó mà tôi tôi nghĩ rằng á, là những cái gì tôi mơ ước tôi có thể thực hiện được và cứ thế hai năm ba năm tôi đã hoàn toàn thỏa mãn những cái gì tôi mơ ước là sau đó tôi mới ra được cái tâm restaurant. With the help of the SBDC and eventually the city of Garden Grove, they were able to expand their business into a restaurant beyond the yogurt. Cái chuyện nó xảy ra đúng vào cái lúc chúng tôi đang rất cần, đang là rất cần để mà phát triển cái nhà hàng. Và bởi vì lúc đó là chúng tôi tính là sau khi làm cái nhà hàng xong rồi thì ngưng một thời gian là bắt đầu mình gây vốn lên từ những cái lợi tức từ phía nhà hàng rồi mới đem sang để mà mở thêm một cái cái phút trưa và làm lò bánh mì bên cạnh thì nhờ cái khoản tiền cho vay của City of Garden and Road mặc dầu là chỉ có 50 ngàn thôi nhưng mà nó giúp chúng tôi rất nhiều trong cái 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 tiến trình mà xây dựng do đó chúng tôi đã có thể nó là tạm thời xây cất luôn phía bên kia mặc dầu như vậy cho tới nay chúng tôi cũng chưa có thể nào mà thực hiện được cái cái phút trưa cho nó khang trang hơn được là bởi vì lý do hiện tại bây giờ cái vấn đề chính vẫn là vấn đề nhân lực mình không thể kiếm được những cái người mà đứng ra quán xuyến một bên một phần nửa cái cái business như vậy được thành ra chúng tôi vẫn còn đang là trở ngại cái đó và đang là tìm cách giải quyết để mở phút trưa 
What has been a valuable lesson for them is to learn to change and adapt to new ideas that may or may not be working. Lúc đầu tiên, cái kế hoạch mình như vậy, nhưng mà mình mở ra mình cảm thấy không có hợp lý. Mình thay đổi liền. Và cái món ăn này không hợp với cái địa điểm này, mình thay đổi ngay. Có một người bạn tôi á, họ nói đó là nếu mà mình ghét ai đó, mình không có cần phải làm cái gì mà gọi là phiền phức. Chỉ việc suối nó mở nhà hàng là xong ngay thôi. Và đời nó sẽ khốn khổ ngay. Thì lúc đó là tôi không có tin. Nhưng mà sau khi mở nhà hàng rồi á, thì càng ngẫm nghĩ lại tôi càng cảm thấy cái điều đó nó có phần nào sự thật. Là vì khi mình ôm đồn một cái nhà hàng rồi á, nó ảnh hưởng đủ mọi thứ. Có những lúc mình phải quyết định một cách nhanh lẹ để mình đi ra khỏi những cái lối lối bí. Thí dụ như chúng tôi mở cái nhà hàng này với một cái chủ trương là sẽ có một cái salad buffet để cho những người đi tập thể dục ở gần đây người ta có thể vào người ta ăn cái một bữa ăn nhẹ nhẹ và có nhiều rau quả để về trước khi đi làm. Đó nhưng mà cái chuyện đó nó chỉ có thể thực hiện một cách không có trung thực lắm. Có nghĩa là sau khi mà bày ra một hai ngày á, mà cảm thấy rằng là chúng tôi gặp những cái obstacle á, là chúng tôi rút lui liền, lập tức tôi bỏ dẹp bỏ cái đó liền. Đó, song song cái vấn đề đó đó, trong business bao giờ cũng vậy. Mình phải quyết định một cách mau lẹ và mình phải có những cái những cái uyển chuyển để mình thay đổi cho nó phù hợp với cái thị hiếu của thị trường. Đó, cái lý do mà những cái business Mỹ có những cái business đó, người ta sống lâu đời rồi mà người ta vẫn đi đến cái chỗ bế tắc là bởi vì họ không có biến đổi, họ không có những cái cải tiến. Do đó những những cái doanh doanh nghiệp như là những cái cơ sở lớn của Mỹ đã luôn luôn họ có những cái cải tiến. Họ có những cái promotion đưa ra những mặt hàng mới rồi những cái uh, incentive cho cho khách hàng. Đó nhờ như vậy những cái những cái cửa hàng về sau này nó họ hoạt động nó càng có tính cách khoa học hơn, tinh vi hơn. Đó thì khi mình mình làm chủ một cái nhà hàng rồi không phải là mình chỉ đối diện với những cái đó không mà vấn đề nhân công là một vấn đề rất quan trọng. Mình không lèo lái được cái nhân công thì mình xin đi đến cái chỗ thất bại rất là dễ dàng. Là bởi vì cái, cái nhân công là cái điều quan trọng nhất. Khi mình không quản lý được cái khâu nhân công thì mình sẽ không có chất lượng. Mà mình không không có chất lượng thì khách hàng sẽ rời bỏ mình ngay. Today the restaurant has changed from its original concept but is thriving thanks to their ability to adapt to the market. Coming up after the break, we'll introduce you to another family business, this time a mom and son team who have worked side by side for the past six years to bring to the U.S. the first FDA approved fish sauce bottled in America. You won't want to miss it. Stay with us. In the U.S., family businesses make up a large portion of the small businesses, and TPF Foods is no exception. Join me as we find out how a mom and son joined forces to bring traditional Vietnamese sauces to the masses and how they were able to become the first FDA-approved fish sauce bottled in the U.S. Anne Trung knows a thing or two about making sauces. In fact, she had a successful company selling that in Vietnam until they came to America and created TP Foods. Along with her son, Philip Ma, they bottle and sell saute sauces and other dipping sauces. Gia đình em là có làm trong cái lĩnh vực thực phẩm này ở Việt Nam là hơn 30 năm. Mình thành lập công ty này từ năm 2012. Thì thật ra cũng rất là khó khăn về 
hệ thống pháp lý đưa ra tới thị trường á, là phải qua nhiều sự kiểm duyệt nghiêm ngặt nhà xưởng á, thì theo department còn chất lượng sản phẩm á, thì FDI à, nhưng mà do yêu nghề do thích thú với cái cái ngành này mình cũng gia đình cũng kiên trì mà đi tới What sets them apart is their fish sauce, Li Kue. It is the first FDA approved fish sauce bottled in the US. Ở đây cái sự cạnh tranh tất cả cái mặt hàng nhất là nhất nước mắm thì rất là lớn. Ở ngoài thị trường rất là nhiều sản phẩm nhưng mà công ty em tin tưởng cái cái nguồn xuất xứ của sản phẩm của bên em tại vì em được FDA kiểm chứng từ cái nguồn đầu vào là nước mắm cốt từ Phú Quốc. Tụi em làm theo cái khẩu vị của cái người Việt mình ở trên đất Mỹ. Nên là đảm bảo được cho người tiêu dùng là cái sự nguyên liệu rõ nguồn gốc và cái sự không có bào với bột ngọt. Mình nói chung là nguyên liệu tự nhiên. Để mà mình lấy ba cái yếu tố đó để mà mình cạnh tranh với những sản phẩm ở ngoài thị trường là họ nhập khẩu không và nguồn hàng không biết ở đâu ra đầu mình cũng hơi sợ sợ tự vì ở đây không có cá thì mình nói làm nước mắm là chẳng ai tin cho nên á mới bạo dạng là xin với hỏi về bộ thủy sản hỏi về cách để làm có được cái giấy phép ở đây thì giấy phép ở đây đã lấy được rồi mà cái nguồn cá là không có được cái nguồn cá cơm mà như như mình muốn thì bây giờ mình vẫn còn lấy cái nguồn cá cơm đó, lấy nước mắm cốt đó từ Phú Quốc. Nhưng may mắn là mình có giấy phép được FDA gọi là giống như là verify từ lúc đánh bắt nhà xưởng từ Việt Nam. Đưa qua đây là nước mắm cốt xong rồi mình mới chế biến theo khẩu vị của người Mỹ, người Việt ở Mỹ này. Đó là mình là cũng hy vọng là người đầu tiên đột phá để duy trì cái chất lượng này để cho người tiêu thụ của mình á, tin tưởng rằng sản phẩm vị quê của mình á, không phải là là có giấy phép là là số 1 mà là mình cố gắng làm cho cái chất lượng sản phẩm đó là số 1. While the fish sauce concentrate comes from Phú Quốc, the final recipe is mixed and bottled in Orange County, a process that took months to get certification. With the help of the SBDC and consultant Kathy Q. Yim, they were able to be the first to do that in the US. Những cái khó khăn bước đầu tiên là trước tiên hết là giấy phép. Từ giấy phép xây dựng cho tới cái giấy phép thành lập công ty cho tới những cái thủ tục về FDA để cho ra mắt được một sản phẩm. Giống giống như những cái sản phẩm khác ở hiện tại công ty em thì phải làm hai cái sản phẩm theo hai nguồn gọi là cool feel với hot feel. Đó, nhất là sản phẩm xa tế thì do là em muốn bán được tới tay người tiêu dùng ở tiểu bang xa với cái sản phẩm tốt nhất là làm bằng nguyên liệu tươi không sử dụng màu không sử dụng bột ngọt theo cái chủ trương của gia đình em là bán cái đồ tốt và cái đồ mình ăn được mình bán cái gì mình đang ăn thì mình phải làm theo cái công thức của họ quy định và xa tế là một trong những cái chương trình đó bắt buộc mình phải làm nó khó không khó mà dễ cũng không dễ với điều kiện là mình phải tìm đủ thông tin và mình phải có cái người hướng dẫn mình với cái sự thiện tâm của họ là họ giúp đỡ mình hết mình và họ tìm phụ mình những cái mà mình muốn hỏi mình khởi nghiệp ở đây thì đầu tiên là mình làm sa tế sa tế thì hiện nay tất cả thị trường sa tế là chỉ có nhập khẩu thôi từ Tàu, Thái, rồi Đài Loan, rồi Nhật Bản, Hàn Quốc rồi. Nhưng mà um, sản xuất tại Mỹ á, thì có lẽ là có một mình mà. Although they are small family operation, they have grown tremendously over the years. They have had setbacks that included a recall and negative press but was able to work through it and make sure it was a learning experience for them. However, they kept their nose to the ground and continued to come up with new products and move on. Ở hay mất á, thì cũng nhiều. Nhưng mà còn nuôi hy vọng mà còn còn rất là tự tin nuôi hy vọng cho nên là 
năm nay á, mình cũng có ra thêm hai sản phẩm mới đó là uh, 28 á, thì ra thêm nước mắm nè với lại nước kho tiêu nước kho tiêu cũng làm từ nước mắm vị quê ừ, nhưng mà nó tiện dụng cho người bận rộn á. chỉ có ướp vô thịt hay cá rồi bỏ lên kho thôi thành ra cũng mới ra khoảng 3 tháng nay thôi mà thấy thị trường cũng chấp nhận In addition to promoting their products on social media, TP Foods also does one thing that has helped their products sell: demonstrations. Là khi mà mình làm demo cho khách hàng thì cũng giống như Costco là người tiêu thụ biết được cái sản phẩm đó nó sử dụng cho cái món gì và nó tươi như thế nào và nó tiện dụng như thế nào. Nó nó thực tế cho người ta giống như người ta dùng thử tại chỗ, người ta thấy được. Giống như mấy tháng nay nè, đưa, đưa sản phẩm vô chợ để mời người ta dùng thử thì không 90% lượng người mà dùng thử là mua. By arranging meetings with Asian supermarkets, they have been able to introduce their products to customers by spending weekends going to different stores and cooking with their products for people to try. Their sauces are made from scratch and bottled in-house and sales have doubled, but still not where they want it to be. But they're working on changing people's minds of trying new products made in the USA. Thì cũng có những người những người mà uh, thành công trên đất Mỹ này có một hai mặt hàng mà người ta cũng là là vững chắc. Thì hiện bây giờ á mình cũng cố gắng um, đưa 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 mỗi năm đưa một hai mặt hàng ra. Rồi cái mặt hàng nào mà phát triển mạnh á thì là mình sẽ giữ nó để phát triển mạnh luôn. Thành ra mình cũng có niềm tin như vậy, hy vọng tương lai rằng là mình sẽ làm gấp 5 lần, 10 lần hay 30 lần như hiện tại. With perseverance and improvement, these small businesses have been able to carve out a niche for themselves and grow in a way that makes sense. In every instance, hard work and asking the right questions and help from the right places help propel them to succeed. Join us next week as we talk to tax and banking experts on the one thing that most business owners want to know about, access to capital. Until next time, thanks for joining us.